whenever you see like these systems are producing these outcomes, everyone assumes that it's bad actors, which it is to an extent. All those people with all those connections with Lockheed Martin and Boeing, if, if you're gonna change that system, you give, you tell me what you're gonna change it into. Don't just tell me you wanna knock it down. I'm not into that. You, hmm. you got in a recent kind of back and forth on Timcast where, and I was super surprised to see this because it seems kind of not, I mean, I was surprised to see you speak up on this because it doesn't really seem like something you would speak up on, but not, not because it's good or bad or anything, but you seem to take a position that was somewhat conservative about our institutions suffering from some kind of decay from you know the the basic political back and forth stuff that was going on and you really stepped up for preserving those institutions and and being cautious about uh, degrading the institutions do you remember this exchange well i know that particularly the specific day and i'm not exactly sure the moment that you're talking mm -hmm. about um, you might be able to refresh my mind, but I used to be pretty radical about change and governmental change. And like, I would think like in 2008, I would even make YouTube, there's probably YouTube videos up still of me saying this stuff. Like we need to get rid of the house of representatives because it's mm -hmm. ineffective. They can't properly represent. I do believe it's ineffective. I don't, I'm just to a point now where I don't think getting rid of it's the answer. I used to be like, get rid of it. Let the people represent themselves directly. But then now looking back, like that would have led to a more direct democracy, mob mentality. Someone makes a viral Twitter post, gets 100 million people to vote for some stupid shit, and then it ruins the entire system. So we've got the representatives there to kind of act as a stopgap. I'm much more I'm much more conservative about just tearing it down. I don't like the idea of tearing it down. I want to kind of maintain what we've got and augment it. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's a big change for me. Well, yeah, we, it was, um, uh, go it, ahead, it was, we watched this. I think it was, it was it the Trump, it was a Trump speech or something. And he made a comment about, um, wanting to destroy the deep state or something to that effect. And I, th I um, you pointed out and I'm really, I'm really glad you did. Cause I felt exactly the same way that when, you know, when politicians make comments like these kind of like very broad, uh, generalized comments, you're like, well, what does that mean to destroy the deep state? Right. Are you talking about just to like weed out the bad actors? Are you talking about like to destroy like these entire institutions, you know, altogether, like the State Department, the FBI? And I understand that, you know, a lot of these institutions have problems in them and corruption in them. But we, you know, we need to have institutions that do these things in our country. And when someone talks about like raising it to the ground, I think, you know, caution is warranted. And I give you a lot of credit, uh, Ian, that, you know, you were like the one person in the room that was <laughs> that was like defending, you know, the concept of these institutions and everyone else was attacking you. And I'm sure most people in the audience were attacking you too. So I just give you a lot of credit for standing your ground there. Thank you for pointing that out. I used to be, I, I would have this like, um, these like philosophy, mental gymnastic things I would do with myself. And I used to be like, what if I just pushed a button and killed every mosquito? Cause I hate mosquito. I would, I was going through a phase where I hated mosquitoes. I'm like, that'd be great, man. No more mosquitoes. And I was like, wait, how would that affect the ecosphere? Frogs mm -hmm. eat mosquitoes. What animals would die off if all the mosquitoes right. were gone? What would that lead to Eco ec ecological collapse? And it's the same with the deep state or with any kind of government, like in Iraq, when they went in and just fired the bat, the, the Americans went in, invaded, took over and and removed the Ba'ath Party, which was Saddam Hussein's political party from power. And they made it so that they none of them could serve in the government again. They went off and formed ISIS. Yep. Like they were like, yo, we have all these fucking connections. We're not gonna let you, well, who do you think you are, guy, anyway? And so I don't wanna see that happen in the United States. All those people with all those connections with Lockheed Martin and Boeing, if, if you're gonna change that system, you give you tell me what you're gonna change it into. Don't just tell me you wanna knock it down. I'm not into that. Yeah, that's yeah. a great point. Imagine disbanding the CIA. What kind of trouble are those guys? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. What kind of trouble are those guys going to get into? I can't exactly. imagine them not showing up Monday morning at some place. That's going to be the new <laughs> CIA headquarters, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot about like no one guy has has any kind of authority in this world. It, it is either a crowd movement or nothing. Like if one guy goes in, is like, I'm going to change everything now. All thousand of you with all these guns and military connections are you're like, yeah, right, dude. Good luck. No, mm -hmm. no. Same with Barack Obama, man. He went in in 08. I was a huge advocate for Obama. 
And he was in there for like six months to a year. And he was pretty much ready to oversee a revolution of some sort in the United States. Like he was prepped to like stand by and allow people to change the government for the better. And no one did anything. They just sat there. And so he slowly got co-opted by all the interests around him because he couldn't do shit. He's one guy. We need right. like a movement of people to, you know, ethically alter the Constitution in a way it needs to be changed to update it, to be able to interact with this new technology, this Internet. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah I think with with Obama too, like whenever, like in my opinion, whenever you see like these systems are producing these outcomes, everyone assumes that it's bad actors, which it is to an extent. But I think what also happens that people don't appreciate until they're in the position to see how the sausage is made is that these systems end up basically incentivizing some behavior in some way because like the alternative is worse or just that is what like the end result of a democracy you know, ends up kind of producing this result. And in order to fix that, it's like you have to convince so many people down the line to actually change something for the better that would end up hurting them, which no one at the end of the day wants to do. Everyone wants to be kind of self-interested. Yeah, but, uh, maybe hyperbolic to say everyone, but I know what you mean. Like right. Some yeah, people are willing sure. to make Thank sacrifices, right. like get off the grid and yeah. maybe not. But I know I know exactly what you mean. Unless, right. unless right. people are willing to accept that there's going to be some sort of sacrifice like $29 hamburgers, you know, if we really want to stop our world conquest and obsession with forcing the U.S. dollar, if we really want to stop that, you've already seen what's happened in the last four years with inflation. Like mm -hmm. the reason people are like it used to be so great. Only one parent had to work. And like, yeah, that's because we were like conquering the world and, and riding off <laughs> the back of all this slave trade and stuff. They just didn't know it. Well, I mean, so, also the economy was structured very differently. You know, back in those days, labor had significant. Um, so that's that, that's a good example. Like labor had significantly more power in like the post World War II era, but then labor having more power led to a large inflation, and then it's like so. Then we basically, with Reagan came in, we kind of traded uh, low inflation but weakening labor, and it kind of that's like the trade off. And people just kind of people wanted it. They want it all essentially. They don't understand that there are these trade offs that you have to basically deal with. Well, and technology has um, been weakening labor ever since. Well, that's a good point, too, right? And globalization and exports and everything of that nature. And Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adam show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.